Uh, good afternoon, my thirsty friend. Uh, today we are in uh, Germany, uh, exactly in uh, Rango, in the village of... Hattenheim. Thank you very much, uh, Christian. Uh, thank you very much for uh, welcoming us. <laughs> Eric, it's a great pleasure. Thank you for your visit. Uh, we are very uh, honored. And in fact, yes, my family has been in, uh, in the wine business for, uh, for a very long time. Um, uh, actually, I'm generation number five. Um, the business was started in 1870 by Balthazar Ress. And now, what, 60 plus? 55 hectares. 55 hectares. 55 hectares plus the Negociant part mm -hmm. of the business, which yep. is a separate activity, a separate company, separate owners, but still family members. So, um, and, and I take care of, uh, of both, uh, both companies. We are today, we are famous for the estate wines. But this, on a more commercial side, has always been there, and we are known as a player on that negotiation part as well. Mm. These two uh, cuvées, which are called uh, uh, the best uh, neighbors, uh, so it's a partnership with one of your uh, neighbors. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I mean, the, the name really stands for uh, the, the actual story, because mm -hmm. what do we want to say with best neighbors? Actually, it's really it's um, a partnership between my family, uh, which is uh, the, the Res family, mm -hmm. and uh, Marcus Bonzel. Yeah, yeah I, can, uh, I can see it. Yeah, it's uh, Res and Bonzel. So therefore, that's not my, or I'm not alone in that project. Mm -hmm. This is a 50-50 partnership, joint venture, yeah. uh, between us, my family, and uh, Mr. Bonzel, who is a, a very talented winemaker. And so we are neighbors because we are in neighboring villages. We are in Hattenheim, he is in Halga. But then we said, okay, then let's do a best neighbors concept where everything is related to neighbors. So we decided, okay, one of the wines, uh, the Riesling, will be made from, from the Rheingau, this side of the river. The other wine, the Sauvignon, will be sourced, sourced from the other side. Neighbors too, neighboring mm. sides of the river, if you want. I understand. Uh, so that's again the neighbor, uh, the neighbor uh, idea, mm -hmm. and obviously two, uh, two different grape varieties. Always a pair of two different things. In the case of uh, the Sauvignon Blanc, so it's coming from Rhein Essen. Yes. Uh, the other side. And uh, it's 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 uh, remind. I mean, for me, it's reminiscent of. Uh, for, for sure, cool climate, like some Loire Valley. Uh, I get some uh, a bit of vegetal character, some capsicum. Of course, well, we are talking about 2021 uh, vintage. So it's obviously a vintage where you will not get uh, wine with too much, uh, let's say, exotic character, uh, maybe. I mean, probably maybe on a vintage like 2020, it was uh, maybe more fruit driven. Yeah, yeah, because we, we know, I mean, 21 was a, a difficult period. Yes, I mean, everywhere in Europe, yeah. You, uh, you could do fantastic wines, but at a high price, because you just had to, to accept, first of all, that anyway, that the crop was small, and you had to, you know, take away what was not in perfect condition, what we did. Mm -hmm. So at the end, this was a massively reduced uh, mm -hmm. crop. In the same uh, range, so the Riesling, of course, huh, uh, from the neighbor. Yep. Here you go. 2021 exactly and that of course is probably the uh, the most typical grape variety you could expect from germany because yeah. it's uh, the leading grape variety for which uh, germany is uh, is known um, uh, in the best neighbors range we do dry wines so it's it's a range of very refreshing dry wines when i say dry it doesn't mean that it you know has no uh, not a nice balance, it still has a, a few grams of residual sugar, mm -hmm. but with the nice acidity uh, of the, this young and fresh uh, vintage, it, it gives a very nice uh, a nice balance, uh, but it is a great refreshing uh, light, uh, uh, light one. Yeah, it's very approachable, very friendly, very clean, uh, really have a nice uh, watering, uh, you feel you're drinking uh, some kind of uh, um, Citrus uh, juice, uh, mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. um, grapefruit. Yeah, so it's food for and yeah. uh, This is what you have to expect anyway yeah. in, um, uh, in in this uh, range. I, I believe this comes. I mean, uh, from uh, maybe the the bottom of uh, uh, the hillside of uh, Rango. I mean, because it can, it can. I mean, we will see it maybe later. It's very steep. Uh, so this is can be very steep. Can in, be very steep. in Rheingau, it's we have a little bit of everything, which is nice, you know. Mm -hmm. So here in the center of the Rheingau, 
Uh, it's not too steep. We have very uh, fertile uh, and, and heavy and, and humid soils, which especially in a, in a dry summer like uh, this year is very, very helpful. While in the western end of the Rheingau, it gets steep, more rocky, um, uh, completely uh, different. And this is more something which we would source from the center of the, the Rheingau, from the more fertile, exactly. and fertile soils, uh, uh, which uh, brings in the fruit in the, uh, in the wines. Yeah. So this one is 100% uh, res, uh, so this is your neighbor's... No neighbor, uh, no neighbor. No neighbor, exactly. yeah. <laughs> Vine neighbors, no neighbor, Vine House Res. Vine House Res. Traditional Negotion brand of our family. Yeah. And this is a 9% uh, alcohol uh, wine, so usually if you see on a Riesling uh, something, something, a wine below 11% alcohol, there's a high chance that there is some residual sugar in the wine. Exactly. Unfermented sugar. Uh, yeah. Now, does it mean the wine is very sweet? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, in this case, yes, you, you, you feel, I mean, first of all, I found the nose very exciting, uh, very uh, wrestling with this, uh, uh, as much as we find in the first one more fruit driven, here I get more the uh, wrestling character with this uh, kind of uh, uh, petrol. Uh, yes. um, and that's because we have one year more of bottle age here, yep. this was 21, this is 20, yep. which on Riesling is always a good idea. I mean, if a Riesling is well made, it needs time and it deserves time on the bottle. And I think this works perfectly, uh, perfectly fine. And, 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 you know, I would really make it, um, I w would really make up my choice depending on what I want to eat with the wines. I mean, this is, you know, if you have like, a nice seafood or salads, refreshing food, this is perfect. When it's uh, hot outside, that's what you want to drink. Mm -hmm. The moment it gets a bit more uh, spicy, uh, thinking about, uh, you know, uh, Thai food, uh, nice Indian curry, like, this is beautiful. Yeah, There's yeah. nothing, I mean, this is fantastic, you know, with a, uh, with a uh, Indian curry, wine like this, fantastic. Now let's talk about, uh, so, Batazar uh, Res, so you're part of uh, VDP uh, Association, which is uh, something uh, uh, special, maybe you want to tell us a bit more uh, of this association, how does it yes, work? Yes, yes, I mean, uh, very quickly, huh, to, make it, uh, to make it quick and simple. The VDP Association is the leading association of German wine producers and it's one of the oldest associations in the wine branch in the world actually. And um, we have slightly over 200 members. <clears throat> and one thing you can say is that those 200 members are clearly the elite of the German wine industry. And and so the eagle which proves mm -hmm. your membership exactly. in this association mm -hmm. on the screw cap or on the capsule is a very easy sign and seal that helps you identify one of the top German wines. So it, it will not tell you something about the, the style and all these things, but it will tell you this is one of the 200 top estates of Germany. So, so therefore this eagle is a, for, the, for the consumer and, and for somebody a very, very helpful uh, a seal if you want to go for high end German. We will uh, start with uh, your uh, flagship uh, wine, uh, which uh, is actually, so it's also mentioned on the, uh, on the top, which is a VDP uh, Gutswein. So Gutswein is uh, it's like the, the basic level of the four level classification mm -hmm. system which the VDP has introduced um, and you know probably it's worth just mentioning how this came up because I guess that's a very important point and when people realize why this came up I think this this helps to understand German wines. The German wine law that we use today is, is known as the 71 law is a law that that you only find in, in Germany and Austria. The, the quality level system, the classification system on ripeness level of the grapes, mm. which is, from one side, is smart because ripeness always comes uh, with concentration, with uh, complexity, uh, with flavor. So, of course, ripeness is important. Ripeness makes sense. On the other side, the problem with a concept like this is that it neglects completely something else which is very important for the wine quality, which is terroir in origin. You know, a consumer has no chance to judge 
whether this is a, a medium a vineyard, a normal vineyard, or it's a you know high-end vineyard. The consumer had no chance based on the on the 71 law, and that's why the VDP came up and said, people, and this was introduced in 2012. They said we need to help the consumer to identify the level of the origin, because that's another important part. Ripeness level is fine, but on top of that, we need to indicate uh, a level of the origin. It, and, and that's why mm -hmm. they came up and introduced this four level mm -hmm. system like in Burgundy. Exactly. So it's, so it's uh, like the regional wine, this would be the, the Bourgogne, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then we have the Ortswein, the village, mm -hmm. that's the village wine, and we have the Erste Lager, which is uh, the, the Premier Cru, mm -hmm. and then we have the Grosse Lager, the Grand Cru. Yep. So that's uh, how the VDP did it. Yep. This is a very important wine. That's our bread and butter wine. Yeah. You know, that's our best-selling wine, our most important wine in the whole portfolio. Mm. The von unserm, it means from us. That's a brand that has been used for over 100 years by every single generation of the restaurant. What my winemaking uh, team does, um, this is a, a blend, 100% Riesling. So it's not a blend of different varieties, it's 100% Riesling. But it's a blend of different origins. So here, we take the liberty which we have on this basic level, to use grapes from the whole region. We have 55 hectares widely spread in the Rheingau, which is a fantastic a base for a talented winemaker to, you know, to play around mm. and, and use vineyards from Hattenheim, for example, which have the body, the fruit, mm. to use uh, uh, Rieslings from Hallgarten, high up in the mountain where we go into night, where it's cool and fresh, you have a nice acidity to use some Rüdesheim Rieslings where you have the minerality. So if you're a talented winemaker and have a great team, and this is really, this is probably the blend where they put most of the work in because it's such an important mm -hmm. uh, wine for us. And here blending is really an important decision and, and from my point of view, they've done a fantastic job in 21. And then after we had this uh, so Oster wine, which come from a so single uh, cru. Yeah, not yet. Here, that's a village. So it's a village. So, so, yes, uh... so, so actually, here we had uh, vineyards all over the region, mm. and here on the Ortswein, on the village, obviously, it's a bit more specific in terms of uh, terroir. So it gets a bit more precise. And here we have limited ourselves, still different vineyards, different crus, but all in the same village, the village of Rüdesheim. And Rüdesheim is a village, very famous appellation, western end of the Rheingau, where it starts to get a bit steeper, where terroir is starting to get a bit more rocky, drier, uh, warmer, uh, uh, more slate, more quartzite, mm. and that's where you tend to start getting more minerality. Yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely, uh, uh, I mean, you don't get as much uh, fruit, less fruit, yeah, more minerality. much more minerality. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then we move to. Uh, uh, this uh, Erste Lager. So, so that's a which, cru. Now that's a cru. Yes. That's a single winner. Yeah. Okay, so I will try to pronounce it. <laughs> Hattenheimer Schützenhaus. Exactly. Wow. Uh, so Hattenheim is the name of the village. That's where we are where today. Are we are in Hattenheim. So the Hattenheim is the village. And Schützenhaus is the actual name of the vineyard. Mm -hmm. So it's a vineyard, uh, very uh, famous and good vineyard in our village. And this is a cabinet, fruity cabinet. Mm. And here, you know, we were talking about, you know, we are concentrating on dry wines today. However, this is something I would never like to miss. You know, this is part of our history. Mm. And also now in our domestic market, it doesn't play a daily role anymore. It's just still so good, you know, and it, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so. but I mean, it's uh, technically sweet huh? because, uh, yes, there's a certain amount of uh, sugar per liter, but frankly, yes, you, you feel a, a bit of sweetness on the palate uh, on, on the, at, at the beginning, but straight away you have a, such a lovely a crispy acidity that comes to, to, to clean your, your mouth, that the wine finish almost dry. You are probably on the same level of, of uh, sugar between the, the one we had before and, and this one, yeah, pretty here much. It's a bit, bit higher, I think here it's a bit lower, but... But no. you feel no. some more, more sweetness yeah, uh, on this one sure. than, uh, than here because the level of acidity here yeah. is definitely uh, greater. Beautiful. Thank you very much uh, for all those information and yeah, uh, sharing some, a few wines. Uh, definitely something uh, 
we look forward to uh, have uh, soon in uh, in UAE. So stay tuned.